the microphone as close as you can to your mouth when you're talking. That would be great. That would be great. That would be great. That would be great. Over here, the background. Um, the word community. The word community. Yes. Me. What it means to me mm -hmm. is that uh, I have the love of all people, and I want the association with people. I don't want to have it said that, well, you can't be there, you can't be here, you can't. I want to be together with everyone. Community to me is when everyone works together, all friends and neighbors. So, uh, I like helping people out whenever it's needed. Okay. What about um, the word past? The past, mm -hmm. like past means a, means a memory of things uh, to me. Uh, I'm fortunately to have had all good memories, even as sad as some of them would seem to other people to be sad. Uh, as an example, my mother uh, was uh, eight years old when she fell and broke her back, so her spine was uh, pointed and uh, she never grew real tall or anything. She just stayed at, at But she never let it bother her. And by not letting it bother her, it didn't bother other people mm -hmm. as well. And uh, she never used the excuse that I can't do this or that, you know, like dancing or anything. She still did everything despite that. But she was, it was really uh, nice because she, she didn't, you know, like some people that have an, what they would call an impairment, they would uh, hide it. Mm -hmm. And so she, she just went along and danced and she was only four foot eight tall, you know. And my dad and she met uh, when, uh, well, my dad was from Finland and then my mother was from northern Minnesota, and then they met and married, and despite the fact that she had the broken back. Past has been good to me in the future. So far been healthy. Get along with most people real easy, so uh, I have good memories. The word uh, art. Art. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to l love to, <laughs> to, to, to do art. I can't. Uh, I can't just. It bothers me to just sit down. Like some people can just sit down and not do anything. I have to have a pencil, and I'm constantly drawing something. And sometimes I look at it and I think. Now, where did I get that idea from, you know? And uh, then if I like it, I just cut it out and put it up on the, on the wall. I just, I, I love art. And it doesn't matter whether it's painting or coloring or sketching with just a plain pencil. I just, I just love to do that. It's evidently part of my soul. <laughs> I am no artist. I cannot draw a straight line, but my wife takes care of that part for me. Um, and the word future. Oh, future? Oh, well, I, I would like the future to... Well, I don't know. I... I'm not sure if there's any way for it to get better. I think it's, I think we've, for our connections, our future looks good. And uh, the only thing is, to me, it seems as if rich people, and it might be a statement that some people won't like, rich people love to have war because that's when they can make money on it. Other than that, I wish we could get along as. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from or where you're going. We shouldn't have to have war. Well, the future looks hopeful. As you get up in age, you look at things a little differently than you used to when you were younger. So I've had a good life, so I can't complain.
can you can you elaborate on that how, how your perception changes when you get a little bit older well as me now like as I got older you yearn, you learn to uh, judge things differently than you did before I judge people in one way for instance if I saw an alcoholic I had you try and say certain things to a person like that but now I just go up and say well it's your life, not mine. I kind of feel sorry for them, but there's nothing you can do about it. And that, that's the way I look at it. You look at life a little differently. I'm at the age now where our, I don't have as many memories, or I mean, is I have to worry about things like I used to. It's a lot easier life. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. I think that's all I have. Oh, thank you. Brian, by the way. You can't hear so well. My name is Ernest Bryant. Ernest? Yes, Bryant. Yeah. And um, I'm going to be asking, I'm going to be um, presenting a couple words and just give your responses to the words, sort of what they mean to you, and um, not to go too in depth and um, sort of what the word means for you, but just like a little bit of. Um, some of the feelings and ideas that the words bring up. Can you also say your name before you start talking the first time? Um, and each, um, I think it would be good if each one of y'all would respond to each word that I present. What, can you move closer? Yeah. That room is really loud. Yeah. Um, I think it would be good if each one of y'all could respond to the words that I present. So if I, um, the first word I'll present is community, and I'd like to um, get three responses to community. Is that good? I'll start. Okay. I'm Reva Rosenblum, and uh, I, when you say community in this context, I think of the Jewish community because I was part of that at one time. A little bit more. Well, I was part of the Jewish community, too. <laughs> First of all, my name is Larry Brown. Uh, it means the area you grew up in or the, the people that surround you. And what else? I'll pass it on. My name is Bill Rose, and community to me means a whole bunch of parents. Uh, in this community, in the North Minneapolis community where I was born, uh, you didn't dare get out of line, not so much because of your fear of the parents, but everybody that lived around you was kind of a guider, and uh, they'd let you know when you were out of line. They let my parents know, too. <laughs> the next word I'll use is past, past, past. P-A-S-T. I know. I, the past brings up uh, memories of 1423 Penn Avenue North. That's where I grew up, uh, and I, I'm back at that area. Uh, I have businesses in this area, and it's, um, it's very pleasant to go. At, it's all different, but my house is still there, and uh, it's kind of fun. Well, the past brings up uh, all kinds of memories uh, about school, about uh, neighborhood, old friends. Um, uh, around here, I think a lot about Plymouth Avenue, where I spent a lot of time. My parents owned a couple businesses there. My life was, the past was going back and forth from my house to uh, Plymouth Avenue. And, um, and I think about a lot of the people from school, from around my house. The memories are nice and I keep coming back to it and uh, this isn't the first time that I'm sort of back reminiscing about the past. This is a great, uh, the past, this is a great neighborhood. Uh, I often talk about the houses I lived in. <laughs> They're all gone. Uh, the three of us are uh, ex-students of North High School, and uh, uh, Bill was talking about the uh, families. Uh, you didn't have to worry about your parents taking care of you. 
Uh, I never got spanked by my parents, but I got spanked by everybody else in the neighborhood. Uh, the, the things have changed to me drastically. I don't live in the neighborhood anymore. Uh, I don't live too far from the I still live in Golden Valley, and what's so unique about it is that many of the, my neighbors are Northsiders. So uh, a lot of great memories of North Minneapolis. Uh, I still come back. I was telling Bill that I'm coaching uh, football at North High School, so I just can't, I can't get away from it. I can't shed it. It's just part of me. Word art. art. Well, for me, that conjures up a lot of things because I'm an art historian, I'm a museum guide, and I, I think part of the reason I'm here today is because of art, and uh, and I'm just thrilled that uh, that the redevelopment of the area is uh, keeping in mind art and including that in uh, in what they're doing here. It's 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 wonderful, and I know that. Um, there are a couple of galleries on Plymouth Avenue now, and a lot of artists moving into this area, and it's terrific. Think about coming back myself now. <laughs> well, art is, uh, is something that only I can appreciate. I'm not very good at any of the art skills, but when I see something that somebody has created, I'm in awe, as little as a straight line, because I can't do that. And uh, yeah, so I can look around and I see the, the budding art that is taking place on the north side. It's very gratifying. Oh, I'm like Bill. I'm kind of uh, a non-artist. I, I can't draw anything. Uh, but I'm, as Bill said, he was awed by uh, any artistic uh, ability. I, uh, I often wonder if I could, I tried to play the piano for a while. I can still play the a wee bit, but my daughter plays very well and she won't play, and I wonder a person with that talent won't do it. Uh, well, it, 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 how do I say it? it uh, well, I better, I better pass it on. I, you, can kind of, you can elaborate if, if, you, if you need to. That's okay. No, okay. And um, the word African-American. Well, it's African American uh, in terms of the past is. I mean, this is kind of a new word that we didn't use when when I was living in this area. But uh, in our in my school, in junior high and high school, big portion of students were African American, and um, and I had some good friends. Other people, others I, I didn't know. I I run into people still today, and. Uh, and it's always kind of fun. A few people that live in the, in South Minneapolis, where I live now, went to North High. And um, I, I don't think of the African Americans as most of the athletes in my high school class. They were the good athletes. All, n not such great students sometimes, but uh, um, I, I don't know if that was. Somebody once told me that a lot of African Americans didn't graduate. When they ask some, sometimes people ask, how many African Americans graduated in your high school class? I always guess way more than there were because people tell me that a lot of African Americans didn't graduate high school. Okay. Okay. Uh, they dropped out earlier. Now I don't know if that wasn't probably. I'm sure it wasn't because they weren't smart enough, but that they had uh, some kind of beefs with the with the school. So uh, that's uh, a little bit of a memory that I have. Yeah, the, the idea that uh, African American is a new term in terms of the length of my life, it certainly is. Uh, we, we had no problem assimilating with our, uh, I guess we would call them Negro people that were in our class. Uh, in fact, the president of our class was an African American, outstanding gentleman. Uh, so, th to me, there's there's no delineation, uh, and I did not realize that perhaps there weren't a lot of graduates, uh, you know. And I think you're right, I but I never thought about it. So, um, 
it's kind of interesting. And today, uh, yeah, this is that this whole community has uh, accepted to be a melting pot of African American, Caucasian, Hmong, etc., uh, with some difficulty, but it's working. Well, I have problems with the word African American. I think we're all Americans. And we stop separating ourselves or segregating ourselves. You know, I've been through a thing called segregation. I was talking to Bill about it before, and it's a, a horrible, almost unexplainable situation. Uh, the group that are called African Americans now have gone through <laughs> a ton of names. Uh, and it hasn't changed anything. I spent five years in Africa, so I know a little bit about Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, tribalism's a big thing in Africa. Color's a big thing in Africa. You would think that color was not a big thing in Africa. Cover, co color is a big thing in Africa. So when I think we, we have to get away from naming people I don't want someone to tell me who I am. I think I know who I am. And when you start doing that, automatically, like uh, Reva said, uh, they didn't graduate from school. I'm, I'm at school right now, uh, and less than 50% of the kids at North High School graduate. That's beyond belief, beyond belief. And I think it goes back, we're talking about North Minneapolis now. When we were kids, well, I'm older than these two youngsters <laughs> here. Uh, uh, everybody was, most of the people were just got off the boat. As to, so there was very little, we knew we were different because of the way we lived and talked and said things, I guess. But now, when I go back to the same people I grew up with, we find that we were so we're so much alike. In fact, uh, we played ball in, in Minneapolis, and we would fight like cats and dogs. And uh, in fact, we wanted to say kill each other. Now we have meetings of all the old guys that we played ball with, and they're, we're hugging each other. And I tell the guy, "Hey, I've hugged you more in the last five years than I hugged my wife. Let's stop this stuff." <laughs> So uh, I, I have a little problem with it because I think it, it, it's a separationist thing. Uh, let's not name Americans by any, if you look at all of our families, you're going to find someone in there who doesn't belong to that group that you think yeah. society says you're supposed to be. I'll, I'll quote those with that. Um, I think that that's enough. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you for your time. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you. I hope you and how you feel about these words, and not re really, really in depth, but just um, I mean, go in depth enough to explain your ideas, but not like ten minute stories. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. And also um, introduce yourself before the first time you speak, okay. so we have. Uh, you want to start? No, I'll I'll <laughs> I'll be the anchor if you want to call. <laughs> Okay, the, the first oh. word is community. Um, people. People. Okay, um, my name is Liz Aram. I'm a teacher at Patrick Henry High School. Um, I'm here to know more about the community in which I teach. Um, so community, I'll, right away I started thinking about people and kind of connections between people. Um, Okay, I don't hear it making it. <laughs> Did I tell you they forced me to do this? <laughs> Someone made me do this. <laughs> um, for me, community is almost something that I feel a lack of. Like, um, it feels almost like a, something harder to find now. It feels like something people found more easily in the past. That's that good enough? Hi, my name is Sarah Shane. I am a teacher at Patrick Henry High School as well. And um, community, I think neighborhoods, I think um, block parties. Um, I, yeah, that's kind of, I, swimming parties are also sticking out of my head in terms of community. That's where, as a child, that was my community, is going to the pool and, and uh, 
connecting with people there and seeing the, the, the youth um, and parks that's it, I think of, and community. My name is Earl Miller and I was born and raised on the north side and I'm still here. And when you talk about community, I go back to the old uh, ethnic uh, groups they called neighborhoods. Every little neighborhood had an enclave of ethnicity of different uh, uh, backgrounds, German, uh, Polish. In my neighborhood, we call community, it was pre, uh, predeceased. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm, I'm a little hoarse. But uh, it was a Jewish neighborhood, and then when the Jewish began to flow uh, westward, became a colored neighborhood. Well, I'll use the word colored because that's what we were called back in the 20s when I grew up in it. And uh, that was community, little enclaves of different uh, nationalities. That was community in those particular days it related to their, to their background or where their nativity was. So that's how I relate with community. The next word is past, like past history. Hmm. Um. The past, first thing I think about is sort of a, a history class, right? When you're young, and then when you grow older, you sort of realize that um, what you learn in a history class um, is a tiny, tiny piece. The past, um, I think the past can be thousands of years ago. The past could be 10 years ago. Um, I also thought history um, in terms of the past. Um, I think it's interesting. I mean, I, I think with past, I think of some of my students who say, why are we learning about this historical stuff? We're in the present. We're in the now. I'm living my life now. I don't need to go know about the past. And um, it concerns me because so, so much of um, who we become is knowing about our own past, knowing about others' histories, knowing about other pasts. Um, and, uh, and and knowing how to how to work with that, how to develop our, our own selves with that, I think is that you got to know a lot about past in a lot of different areas, not just your own past, but other people's past as well. Um, yeah. Well, when past refers to me, I always think of past because I'm one of the elder people, and I'm one of the past <laughs> persons you were talking about. When you past to me is like a foundation. Somewhere along the line, when you always talk about past, you always want to know what happened in the past. Therefore, right now, you always seek somebody out who in that particular area. So when you say past right now, it's how we arrive today for where we first come from. It's always a past part of the foundation. Uh, what history is about. History is a past. It is a reflection of uh, past tenure because you have to start from somewhere, and past always relate to uh, our origination, so that's our way to the past. And the next word, um, African American. African American. Um, think of dark skinned, a history of coming here um, or other places, actually from Africa, um, a history of slavery. And then also um, a growth from slavery, um, s strength of survival. Um, my first thought on African American is, I think, my, about my students, um, and uh, but also relates to past and history as well. Um, yeah, that was my first thought about my students. Well, I have a little different perspective of what you call Afro-American right now. Since I grew up in uh, the, the flow of different uh, changes of, of, of our relationship, uh, when I grew up, it was colored. Or even when they call it Negro, you know, it, they used the, the small N to be Negro until actually there was a big push to have it capitalized to Negro. But we are always colored in those days because uh, we were... Uh, considered color. Then there was a flow back in the 60s. I always remember when they first went into black. 
then African Americans. Sometimes I'm kind of confused right now. How are we going to get a fixture of what we really are right now if we keep on changing our uh, our, our nomenclature saying what we are African American. If you call it African American right now, I guess they're, they're trying to go back to origination. But if it's, we're all not like uh, Alex Haley. We all can't find ourselves back in Africa. And I, I, I dare say right now, quite a few of them, if you look at America today right now, uh, there's such a big mixture of African Americans, I'm quite certain all of us don't have. Um, a total African American background. We are mixture, in fact, I hate to say it because of slavery. And you found that, I always remember when I was going to school, down to college, the one thing they were talking about, there was one million Negroes passed into the white race every year. One thing you're talking about African American, I always remember when I grew up, there was the word mulatto. You don't hear that anymore. It was part of the change of America because the mulattoes and the octagons, now we don't hear it anymore because right now we're trying to go back to try to find our so-called roots. But African American is kind of strange to me right now because we are a mixture of quite a few things. Not things, few uh, uh, ethnic backgrounds. And um, the final word, art. 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 Um, words I associate expression, um, beauty, vision, cliches, um, connection. Um, my first thought was things you hang on the wall, um, but in expanding on that, you know, I think the Walker um, Sculpture Garden. Um, Art is definitely a, an expression, like you said, of uh, a feeling, I guess, yeah. Um, yeah, something to, to, to uh, it's inspirational um, to look at that can be inspirational or to feel and see and, and all that, so. Well, that's kind of a strange, we're talking about arts right now. It has probably a, uh, a different connotation, too, if you're talking about uh, artistic or artists, people who uh, produce something uh, creative, or if you're talking about arts right now, in, in uh, the thought of what you aspire to be or what you actually create yourself. So arts itself, it, it could be a a, uh, a culture kind of a thing, or it could be actually a, a derivative of, of who you are, too. Some people who might uh, be an artist right now, may never paint or never, may never produce anything. But in a sense right now, they are persons right now who are looked upon as uh, something artistic or something uh, people would aspire to be. So I, I think it has a, a different kind of a, a feeling of what you're, you're seeking, what you might seek to be art or what somebody else might want to think they're uh, of art itself. Uh, what kind of um, ideas it brings to mind? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, um, the first time you speak, just um, introduce yourself, like your first or last name. Okay. okay. The first word is community. We're, we're supposed to tell you what you what, think. What community means to you? Oh, let's see. Just say your name. Uh, uh, Jean Pettiford. And I've lived here for uh, for about um, seven, 70 years. No, not quite 70. Pretty close, though. So. And and I loved the North Side. We had a wonderful, w wonderful. Everybody knew everybody. And if you didn't know somebody, you you sure learned in a hurry. It was like a small town and a big community. And. Uh, your children was taken care of because everybody knew them. if they were bad, they were called you up or came by and told you. And if they were good, they also found that out. But our neighborhood has gone down so bad. I feel so sad. And I don't know what to do about it, you know. 
the younger people I think that's in now, they think they know how to run it and they're losing the feeling of families, neighbors. And so this is what I feel about it. I feel real sad to see it go down. But I wouldn't move anyplace else. My next move is out to Christmas Cemetery. I always say when I leave, when I leave 2311 Third Street North, I'm gonna Crystal's gonna be my next place. Uh huh. Uh, my name is Ada Rivers, and uh, I've lived on the north side all my life. I was born and uh, brought home to a north side home and um, lived in rental properties uh, until I got married and then we bought our first home on the north side and then we built a home on the north side. And uh, my husband passed away in 1987 and I stayed in the home with my grandchildren until just about three years ago and then I moved uh, to an apartment in a, a north uh, suburb, I still on the north side. <laughs> I um, uh, got so that uh, I um, couldn't really keep up my properties like I would like. And I uh, always wanted to be part of the community. Uh, my husband and I uh, were into most all of the civic activities and uh, my, when he passed away, I tried to do some of the things that he did, but I wasn't as good as he had it. But I'm still trying to do things that will help whenever I can. The word uh, African American. <laughs> well, that African American uh, <laughs> has come down to, uh, We've been called many things, and I guess this is the last one. African American, I think, will hang with us. But um, I had a little, a little hard time accepting some of the other. We we started out as being colored, and uh, that was fine. And then we got the capital Negro. And that was an improvement, I thought. Capital M Negro. And then there was an Afro-American, and now African-American, and I think that's the real deal. Okay. Uh, I felt very sad because I, I was never one to judge anybody by where they come from or whatever, because when I came from a small community up on the prairie where you weren't supposed to play with the Polish kids, you weren't supposed to play with the Finlanders, you weren't supposed to do that, and of course I rebelled against everything. I, I thought, God made everybody, that's what I heard. And when I came to the city, the same thing, and then I was working as a waitress. I met my husband, and and he was, quite, uh, I think, a part his mother was Indian and then he was mixed and uh, and at that time it was better to be known to be African-American than it was to be uh, Indian because you were just a drunken Indian at that time so he was a very good musician um, I, I uh, we had a hard time because there wasn't that much mixing that went on and we had lots and lots of hard times. And then my, my I had uh, five boys, and of course the first thing they'd ask them, they said, "What's your nationality?" You know, you know. And and then uh, same with my grandson now that I raised. He's 30 years old. They still ask him, "What's your nationality?" You know, the color of your skin. And 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 he said, "I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought I was just an all-American boy." You know. And so that's the way it went. But we uh it was not easy it was not easy to, to uh, when we first started but i think it's getting better but i don't think the young children 
nowadays respect people for what they are. You are always called Mrs. and, and Mr. And now you're liable to be called anything walking down the street. If you go down the street, have you noticed that? You go down the street and you're no more Mr. or Mrs. You old bat, get out of the way or, or something like that. Uh, okay. Pass. 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 Uh, what was my pass? Pass. Yeah. Oh, I put it up for you. Oh, 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 what do I think of the word pass? What do I think of the word pass? Just mm -hmm. of the word pass. What comes to mind when you think of the word pass? I think probably I think about how it used to be. I think was much. I think it was much better. Pass. Years ago, I I enjoyed it from maybe in the sixties to more so than uh, from maybe from the sixties to the eighties. It seemed like everybody liked everybody. Everybody was happy. Things were going good, and it has got a lot different now. The past. Uh, was great because uh, I had a family to raise and to direct and and now now I'm sort of on my own uh, being a widow and uh, it's it's not the same so the past was 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 my life mostly Um, I think of people that are capable of bringing out the, the things that I would like to do. I, I like art, but I'm not an artist, and I love people that, that do have that ability. I really am not an artist either. I guess I'm a talker. <laughs> and But uh, I had a mother-in-law who could paint beautifully. And she'd paint on the back of anything, everything. I have a couple of her pictures. I had a couple of sister-in-laws that was beautiful artists. And, uh, and, I, but I, and I, love, I love art. And Ada and I, we... We saw plenty of art over in Europe, didn't we? We we happened to be very fortunate. We got to go over to Europe twice together, didn't we? Two, yeah, two times. And we saw all the beautiful art, I'll tell you that. What's the future? Truthfully, the future, uh, when you're going to be 87, is you just try to make it through the day, and I'm thankful for the, I guess I'm thankful I still have good health, and I'm glad I can still think about some of the good days. There isn't that many good days, I don't know. I have a few, few good friends yet, otherwise I don't think most people understand you when you get up to my age. Well, I think about the future for my family. Um, not much for myself anymore. I just, like Jean said, go from day to day, thankful that I uh, that, uh, have good health and, and good friends. What you think about when you think about community? <laughs> okay. uh, just remember to introduce yourself and. Um, okay. Now, what community mean to me? Okay, just a minute. Wait a minute, I'm trying to see. Okay, what does it mean I'll introduce to me? myself. You'll the, have, it'll come. Yeah. When you well, the first word is community. <laughs> yeah, that's a 
Hello, I'm Joan Jemison. I've been a resident of the Northside community for about 35 years, and I'm a retired teacher and taught in North Minneapolis for 35 years. And I'll introduce you to uh, Ernestine Elder. E L L E R and community mean to me is togetherness is to help one another and you know get to know your neighbors the way things are now you want to know the people you meet. I live in I live in a community because I live in a senior building where there's many people with different <laughs> handicap problems and things. That's, and I, I like to try to help where I can. That's what community means to me. Community means to me, um, as Mrs. Eller said, working together, uh, having fun together, working on um, institutions that uh, might have power over our north side community, uh, but to empower the north side people to um, stand up to them and change things so that the north community is empowered to, to work for the better community. Art is essential. I was a music teacher for 40 years and saw with children in my schools uh, that if they were having trouble in any other academic subject that when they would come to music or go to art they could shine and express themselves uh, to the fullest and so I think art is essential. Past. The past, uh, like, like history past, past, history past. Um, well, uh, the past is very Im Im important because it it definitely has um, impact on what we do today. And if we are, have a successful past, then we will be successful. If there were forces that were working against us in our past, then um, we won't be as successful unless those things are addressed and changed. Past, uh, right now we are looking at the past, to be invited into a home like this together, to be able to eat at the same table and to be friends and not to be the person that's doing the work all the time. This is what the past means to me. Thank you. And the word future. The word future. <laughs> I'm, I am pretty ost optimistic. I think that with the people that I have met and worked with uh, in the North Side community, I really feel that the future can be brightened because of the commitment and involvement of so many people, good, wonderful people in the north side. Okay. Yeah, let's stop. We're gonna stop. Okay, thank you, thank you. Now, should we
we get your coat? Yes. Uh, no, 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 I just no. stop until she's come back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, okay. You're finished? I'm finished. She's finished. She's finished. We're finished. All righty. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm going to have you do is say your name. Okay. Go ahead. Deanna Smith. Okay. And then the first word he was asking about was um, the past. What do you think of when you think of the past? The past. Hmm. Oh, excuse me. I think. <laughs> Alrighty then, the past. I think about my parents. There you go. What about them? Oh, I, f I have to talk more. It's not one word. Okay, I think about um, growing up. I think about how I was raised. I think about. Um, I moved from South Minneapolis to North Minneapolis when I was in grade school. So I think about the past. I think about um, my mother and father and all the things that they went through raising us and growing up as a child, my brothers and sisters. Um, so that's what I think about is the past. The future. The future, I think about God. I think about, um, uh, bi I see big things. I see um, things that we couldn't even imagine. Um, future, I see love, um, happiness, um, growth. Okay. Art. Art. I see creative, creativity. I see, um, I, I think about out being outside of the box. I think about um, different, um, here's our interviewee. Okay, come on. <laughs> our interviewer, yeah, right, right, right. Okay, that's art, art, creative. African American, I think about me and you, my parents, um, t slavery, Africa, um, what else? Um, think about undoing racism. Um, I think about um, what's the word I'm look I'm looking for. Um, I can't think of the words right now. Did you ask about people you think about community? Community. Community, um, people, people, places, and things. <laughs> Neighborhood, um, connections, networks. Great. Interviewing people besides elders here. Interviewing. You're my elder. I, I'm 64, so I'm yeah, elder, yeah. Older but I'm not an elder in the community. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna um, just I'm gonna give a word and then just sort of um, talk to me about what this word brings to mind, what kind of ideas it brings to your mind, okay. what it means to you, and then also um, the first time you speak, just introduce yourself. Okay. okay. The first word is community. Hi, I'm Susan Breedlove. And I live on 22nd and DuPont Avenue North, and I've been on the north side since 1969. And the clue word is? Community. Community? Well, it's a collection of individuals, many of whom don't realize they're related until they get to gatherings like this. I just found out I was a cousin to Mr. Brown, who I invited and known for years. So. Uh, Northside is, is a community. It is a true community. I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin, and that was a community. And it's a place where you know everyone or you know someone that knows someone that you know. And that's what it's like here. Yeah. And the word past. Past? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, past is a building block to me for the future. Um, past is truly important for people to understand and to know the facts of, but not only the facts about the past, but also the affective, the kind of like the relationships that we saw here today. Um, and it's important for young people to know the past. So um, many of them feel disconnected from the past because they don't know it. And when they see it and they hear it, and they get interested and they find out that they are connected and that they do have roots. Mm -hmm. The word future. Um, future. That's more difficult than past for me um, because 
the s condition of the world right now in terms of future, and I'm sure people have said that in the past, um, but future is to me something to look forward to um, by looking at your past and incorporating your past <laughs> and building for your future. So that's what future means to me. The word um, African American? African American to me um, is a label that's been assigned to people from that have African roots who live in the United States. Um, to me, African American means strength, uh, resiliency, tenacity, and um, colonized, colonized people are recognized for me um, who have been able to become be resilient despite that fact. And to me, African American. Um, is it's ambiguous in the sense that there's so many people that have different cultures within African American. So the certain people that are able to speak a second language like black English, uh, eumonics. Um, so the it's, I think that each person that's African American has to define for themselves what it means to be African American. So, and something came to mind. Um, one of the elders here today said to another elder, you know, I haven't spoken to you today. And, and he said to her, oh, yes, you nodded. You nodded at me. And uh, I said, yeah, there's a certain way if you nod at someone, an African-American uh, neighbor, community person, it's uh, recognized as a hello, how are you today without any, any words. So I love that, um, that whole uh, concept of being able to communicate with people in, in different ways. Um, that a richness of the African American culture. And the word art. Art. Um, I would say it's an expression of a person's inner soul, and it can come out in different ways. Um, I think an artist sitting out here in the deck and watching the birds, <laughs> and it can also be expressing yourself in. Um, of course, the visual arts, performing arts, and all those kind of ways. But um, it's getting to the soul of a person and a people. Thank you. You're welcome.